Okay, so today we're gonna practice how to add mixed numbers. The reason why they're called mixed numbers is because they have a whole number that's written next to a fraction, and so it's considered a mixed number. And so because both of these are mixed numbers, we're gonna practice how we can add them. The very first thing that I recommend doing is to write them below each other. So I would do two and three fourths, and then below it five and one eighth, okay? Then I would recommend adding the whole numbers. So two plus five is seven. Now we have to try to add the fractions, three fourths plus one eighth. And so we know the rule when we're adding fractions is that the denominators or the numbers on the bottom have to be the same in order to add the fractions. When you look at these two fractions, you'll be able to see, okay, these two fractions have different denominators. So we have to change the problem so that both of those fractions will have the same denominator. How do we do that? We have to find the least common multiple. So I know we used least common multiple in the past, but let's just practice what that is. Multiples just means that you count by that number. So if someone said, okay, what are the multiples of two? There are two, four, six, eight, ten. Those are the multiples. Or if someone said, what are the multiples of five? The multiples of five are five, 10, 15, 20, 25. So what you need to do is need to find the multiples of four and we need to find the multiples of eight. We're gonna try to see, okay, what multiples are common to them both? And out of the both that are common, then which one is the least? So counting by fours is not, <laughs> is not usual, but let's just go ahead and just see. Let's just do a few, four, eight, 12, 16. Let's stop there. And then let's do eight, 16, 24, 25, 32. Okay, so we just listed the multiples. Now, which ones are common or which numbers appear in both lists? So eight appears in both lists and 16 appears in both lists. So we found the multiples, we found the ones that are common. Now out of the ones that we circled, which one is the least, 16 or eight? So the least would be eight. So our new denominator for both of those fractions is going to be eight. So we're gonna set each of these fractions equal to another fraction with the denominator of eight. And so we have to figure out, okay, how did we go from four to eight? So four times two is equal to eight. Whatever we do to the denominator, we have to do to the numerator. So because we multiplied the denominator by two, we multiply the numerator by two. Three times two is six. So our new fraction is six over eight. And then on the bottom, how do you get from eight to eight? Well, this already has a denominator of eight. So we know it's gonna be this same exact fraction as before, one over eight. You could also say, okay, eight times one is eight, one times one is one. So the fraction is one over eight. So now that we have six over eight plus one over eight, they have the same denominators. We can easily just add them together. The answer is gonna have the same denominator, eight, and then you just add the numerator, six plus one, which is seven. So again, we have seven holes plus seven over eight. Seven plus seven over eight is equal to seven and seven eighths. So I'm glad that we were able to do that problem together, but if you were a little bit confused at first, just doing it one time, it's not gonna stay in your brain. And so what I want, my goal is that I love being able to show you how to do a problem, but I want you to be able to leave my video and feel like you could do it again on your own. So just bear with me. I'm just gonna go through this problem very quickly, just one more time and just, just watch how I do it. So the very first step was I wrote them on top of one another. And this may not be the best color for this, I'm sorry. I added the whole numbers together and I got seven. Then I knew that I wanted to go ahead and add the fractions together, but because they had different denominators, because they had different denominators, I wasn't able to do that right away. And so in order to have 
the same denominator, I had to find the least common multiple. So I had to count by fours, and then I had to count by eights. I was able to find, okay, eight and 16 are common to both lists, and eight is the least out of those ones that are common. So my new denominator was going to be eight. And so then I had to change both of my fractions to have the denominator of eight. So I changed three fourths to six eighths, and one eighth is already having eight as a denominator, so I left it alone. And so I was able to add the fractions now. Six eighths plus one eighth is seven eighths. I put those, that whole number plus the fraction together, and my answer is seven and seven eighths. Let's go ahead and do another problem. And so this problem is gonna say, what is three and three fourths plus five and one third? Okay, so maybe you're already doing this in your head or if you have a piece of paper, maybe you already wrote it like this, three and three fourths plus five and one third. If you did that, good job. And then again, our very first step is we're gonna add the whole numbers. Three plus five is eight. Our second step is we're gonna add the fractions together. Oh no, the denominators are different. One has a denominator of four, one has a denominator of three. What do we do in order to change the, those fractions to have the same denominator? We have to find the least common multiple. So again, we're gonna count by four and then we're gonna count by three. So three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18. And then we're gonna count by four, four, eight, 12, 16, 20. So we found the multiples. Then we're gonna find the, the, the ones that are common. So in both lists, I see 12 and 12, and I don't see any other ones. So I'm guessing that 12 is going to be the least as well. So my new denominator is gonna be 12. So now I have to set each of these fractions equal to another fraction that now has 12 as a denominator. So four times what is equal to 12? Four times three is equal to 12? Whatever I do to the denominator, I have to do to the numerator. So I have to do three times three, which is equal to nine. So my new fraction is nine twelfths. Now I have to do the same thing to the lower fraction. So three times what is equal to 12? Three times four. So whatever I do to the denominator, I have to do to the numerator. So then I have to do one times four, which is equal to four. So my two brand new fractions are nine twelfths and four twelfths. So nine twelfths plus four twelfths, we know that they're gonna have the same denominator of 12. And now we have to add the numerators, nine plus four. So nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So now I have 13 twelfths. But wait a minute, this fraction is an improper fraction meaning that the numerator is greater than the denominator. So when this happens, this means that we can't just add it to the eight and get eight and 13 twelfths. That doesn't make sense. So what we have to do is we have to now change 13 over 12 into a mixed number. How do we do that? Very simply, please don't get intimidated by it. We just see, okay, how many times is the denominator 12? go into 13. 12 goes into 13 one time, so it's gonna be one whole. And then how many are remaining? So if we take out 12 from 13, that means one is remaining. So we'll have one 12th remaining. So now let's bring down the eight plus one plus one 12th. So eight plus one is nine plus one twelfth is equal to nine and one twelfths. Okay, so this one was a little bit different from our previous one because when we added the two fractions, once they had the same denominator, we got an improper fraction. And so when we're trying to add an improper fraction to a whole number, we have to make sure we write the improper fraction as a mixed number. And we were able to do that very simply by just taking the, the denominator, which was 12, 
seeing how many times it goes into the numerator, 13, which is one time, and then trying to see, okay, how many do we have remaining? One over 12. And so then we were able to add eight plus one plus one twelfth to equal nine and one twelfth. So I hope I was able to break this down enough for you to feel comfortable doing these types of problems on your own. If you have any questions or you have any video requests or you just have any comments for me below, please just let me know. I want to be able to continue making these types of videos. I know that it can get real expensive to have a private math tutor, so I want to be that for you guys. So please like, share, comment, subscribe, do all the things, and I'll see you in my next video.